Hello friends, my name is Dante and today I tried beating Resident Evil 1 without using the item box. I wasn't even allowed to look at that bad boy. <coughs> Why is this going to be hard? Unlike in other Resident Evil games, I can't discard items. If I pick something up, I'm stuck with it for life so I have to be extremely careful with what I pick up. Is this challenge even possible? Is just 8 inventory slots enough to get through the game? I'll explain the rest of the rules later because we don't have any time to waste. Let's jump right into the gameplay, baby. We started our mission to find Bravo Team who went missing in the woods a few hours ago, and it wasn't looking good. We ended up finding our comrade's crashed helicopter, and to our surprise, we started getting attacked by demon dogs. Everyone panicked, and it was every last man for himself. We booked it back to the helicopter, but the piece of sh** left us behind. No! Don't go! Wow. What an asshole. Long story short, I watched some random bro get eaten by dogs, did nothing to stop it, Chris saved my life, and the boys and I made it to the mansion. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Barry, and myself. We don't know where Chris is. What? How did we lose Chris when he was right beside us? We must have locked him out! Someone help! Please guys, you still have plenty of time to let me in! It's too late. Poor Chris. <laughs> I'll never forget you, buddy. It was time for me to put on my big boy shoes and look for Lenny. Lenny, where are you? Lenny! Chris might not have survived, bless his soul. But Lenny was still alive and kicking somewhere in the mansion. That's when Barry and I came across a puddle of blood on the floor. Ew! What? Blood. Yeah, buddy, you don't need to smell it to know it's blood. Then, Barry told me to go and investigate the scary dark hallways of the mansion while he safely examined the blood. Yeah, you're a real man, Barry. I ventured out into the spooky dark mansion all by myself, and of course immediately came across a terrifying monster. Now, the appropriate response would be to simply walk away from the monster and avoid killing it so it didn't turn into a super fast crimson head, right? WRONG! I ain't no puss! I became the Shin Master, totally annihilating zombies by stabbing them in the shins with my knife. It wasn't looking good, and I didn't know if shin stabs even killed zombies. I looked out at the dark, stormy night and thought about the only thing that was important to me right now. Lenny! I'm gonna find you, Lenny. By the way, I must have opened 800 fucking doors in this entire playthrough. I spent more time looking at doors than I did playing the game. I slammed my body through the nearest door to warn Barry about the monster. Let me take care of it! Eh, that's not the approach I would have taken, but that'll do, Barry. That'll do. My homeboy and I went back to report to Wesker, but before we even took a step out of the room, we heard something. Oh, that's not good. See, it's because he didn't attack his shins. Rookie mistake. Unfortunately, Wesker was gone too, so not only were we looking for Lenny, but we were also looking for the loser who wears sunglasses at night. This mansion is gigantic. We could easily get lost. We can search for him separately. You make a damn good argument, Barry. Now is the time for me to explain what's happening. Starting the game, you can either pick Jill or the soy boy version of Chris. Don't get me wrong, I'd like to pick Chris to try to man him up a bit, but the only problem is Chris has six inventory slots while Jill has eight. Plus, have you seen Jill? Damn, boy! DAMN BOY! So naturally, since I won't be able to use the item box, I wanted to pick the character with the most inventory slots possible, because yes, there were some items I'd have to keep with me the entire game, including the lighter, cranks, etc. So spacing would be really tight. Now, why is the item box so important? Well, it's the only way to get rid of items, since you can't really discard anything you pick up. Let's say I start with the handgun and knife, then I go around and pick up the grenade launcher and the shotgun, the lighter and two cranks, and the magnum. Oh no! When there's two key items I have to combine together, such as the red jewel in the jewelry box, how am I supposed to combine them? I can't. I'd either have to start a new game, or drop stuff off in the inventory box. This means my inventory will be severely limited throughout the game, and I'll have to keep useless items with me at all times, even if I don't need them. Will I have enough inventory space to get through this nightmare, or will the useless items I pick up overwhelm me? Let's find out. 
Oh, I also played on normal difficulty because I ain't no puss, and I swear to you guys, every boss in this game, no matter how tough, will be vanquished at the hand of my blade. Alright, enough classroom work, let's get right back into the adventure. It was apparent to me that my knife would be my best friend along the way, including any daggers or battery packs I could find since they didn't take up inventory space. I wasn't scared of a single thing. The Shin Master kills everything that gets in his way. I'd probably regret it when all of the dead zombies woke up and turned into werewolf demons, but I missed the part where that's my problem. I went deep into the underground catacombs, and lucky me, I found my first key. Keys were vital in getting around the mansion, but I had to make sure that I opened every door that the key belonged to because when that happened, a prompt would come up telling me that the key was useless and it gave me the option to discard it. This was the only way to discard things, and not all items had this feature, so I had to be careful. I explored the mansion some more, Shin killed some more losers, and met up with Barry in the main hall again. Now, I was planning on getting the shotgun. It had plenty of ammo scattered throughout the world for me, it could annihilate crimson heads like there's no tomorrow, and overall, it was just a good weapon. It's yours. Hopefully you won't have to use it. Oh shoot, he's giving me grenade launcher rounds. But, but I don't have room for them. Wait a minute. I can't exit out of the screen. I need to take them. Barry, I never consented to this, you piece of shit. But there was no use. I had to take the damn shells. It was like cancer. I never asked for it and tried my best to avoid it, but somehow it still found me. That's now three slots permanently taken. Ink ribbons weren't a problem. I could just constantly save my game at a typewriter to get rid of them. And any extra handgun bullets I picked up could just be shot out if I needed the extra space. But like an STD, these acid rounds were with me for life. Well boys, looks like I'm taking the grenade launcher now. My shotgun dreams are out the window. You're a piece of shit, Barry! <sighs> they judge me before they even know me. That's why I'm better off alone. I was finding my way around the spooky mansion and getting real comfortable when all of a sudden, I came across a dog whistle. It came with a note which told me to blow it on a nearby balcony if I wanted to progress. I listened to the note and to my surprise, two adorable little doggies came from the east side of the balcony and attacked me. Luckily, my woman self-defense classes kicked in so I just tased him. The dog had a fake key, which I used to get a real key and I was making some real progress. Lenny was still lost in this terrifying maze, probably cold and hungry and I promised myself I was going to stop at nothing to save him. A few minutes later, I came across a bathroom and for some reason, Jill really wanted to drain the dirty bath water. Jesus Christ, look at her! She's mesmerized! No, Jill, don't do it. Jill, don't even think about it. I gotta do it, man. After that weird situation, I finally made it to the shotgun room, got mildly depressed over a horrible memory, and placed my first mask in the catacombs. Ugh, maybe this isn't such a good idea. Oh my god, what the hell was that thing? Well, it's been fun guys, but my heart can't handle this anymore. See you boys in the afterlife. Just kidding, I ain't no puss. This was about the time when the dead ones started waking up and turning into werewolf creatures. Could I have avoided turning them into terrifying monsters by simply avoiding them in the hallways? Of course. Did I regret shinning them to death for my amusement? HELL NO! I enjoy the excitement of being chased by a terrifying demon, okay? I was finally able to get rid of a key, place two more masks in the spooky basement, and got the grenade launcher. It's free real estate. What? What are you doing in my swamp? Now, unfortunately, I had to pick up the lighter to find the other piece of the sheet music, and because I never have a chance to discard it in the game, that's now half of my inventory totally unusable for the rest of the game. Great. Apparently, I waited too long to get Richard's Viagra medication, which ended up trapping him in the Shadow Realm for eternity and screwing me out of having a little buddy for the snake battle. I was slightly sad, but to look on the bright side, at least it wasn't Lenny. I still wanted to avenge Richard's pointless death though, so I busted through the scary door, fought the snake with my bare hands, and taught that piece of shit to his boss. I grabbed that final mask, slammed that bad boy into the final slot, and the coffin birthed out a beautiful baby boy. Because I was 175th Jewish, I wasn't about to let this baby get away from me without a circumcision. What I mean by that is, I was gonna knife him to death. He was a feisty boy, slashing at my tires any chance he could get, and for the majority of the battle, we literally just ran in circles. It wasn't looking good. I was low on health, had absolutely no heals, and even though I had plenty of grenade launcher ammo, I swore to you guys, I was gonna kill all bosses knife only, no matter what it took! Uh, did that count?
Aw, <laughs> yeah, guys, I had the steal of approval from my unborn son, and it was time to venture out past the mansion. Hmm, the blue-eyed dog has the last gasps of destruction, and the red-eyed dog has the war cry of revenge. What could it all mean? Oh! Quick, Dante, remember back to your childhood. What was the one useful thing Patrick taught you? East? I thought you said weast. Weast it is. A scary lady moaning in the woods at night? Well, you boys know the drill. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. I've played too much Left 4 Dead to fall for this old trick. By the way, click the like button down below if you guys are enjoying this video. It does really help my channel out and allows new people to find me. Thank you! After I had some time to think, I finally manned up, ran past all of the spooky scary skeletons, and arrived at a nice warm cabin. It had a cozy fireplace, it had a pretty sweet blood-soaked bed, and it even had a damn item box! It was tempting, but I had enough self-control to keep myself away from it. That's when I heard someone burst into the cabin. Uh, uh, hello? You picked the wrong house, fool! You're a disappointment, Dante. You'll never finish this challenge. <laughs> Only three inventory slots left? What are you, some kind of pussy? Ah! Uh, where am I? A number nine large. A number six with extra dip. Oh shit, stay back! Seven, I don't want to hurt you! Two, two ah! You did this to yourself, demon. I noticed the creature was wearing a human mask. The gang wasn't with me and I didn't have any Scooby Snacks around, but I was willing to take the gamble and unmask this demon. Unfortunately for me, she got back up and desperately tried to eat my soul, so I really had to bounce out of there. Zoinks! We'll get him next time, gang. With the addition of the lighter and the crank in my inventory, I only had three inventory slots left for items. Let's just say it wasn't looking good. I entered the dark residence, killed two spiders easily with my knife, and as I was passing through some random hallway, I heard something. Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. No! You dense, irritating miniature beast of burden! Ogres are like onions! Bye bye! See you later! Shrek leaves through my window. <gasps> Barry, I heard someone talking. Oh, you heard. I think age is starting to take its toll. Talking to myself is becoming a bad habit. Talking to yourself? You alright? What's gotten into you? I'm alright. Well shoot, Barry. I'm very sorry to hear that. But I still think you're a piece of shit. There was something really sketchy about Barry, and I hated the guy. I'd never forgive him for forcing those acid rounds on me. There isn't a lot that goes on in the residence. I slipped my way by some sharks, got a little spooked when a big mama shark tried to burst her way into my hidey hole, and it came time for me to make the hardest decision of my life. To kill an endangered creature, or to allow myself to be swallowed by the beast. The decision was surprisingly simple. Hasta la vista, baby. I'm surprised Jill didn't pull off a fat dab right here. This, my friends, is where we come to more of Jill's obsessive dirty water bathtub pulling. And guess what? She pulled the drain for nothing! There was nothing in there! Jill's a goddamn psychopath! Here, I thought it was all over. I made my way to some ghetto-ass lab and realized I only had two free inventory slots. This wouldn't be a problem, but in order to progress, I needed to make the V-Jolt, which apparently required me to carry four glass bottles. Oh no! I shot all of my handgun ammo to make an extra space, but I was still nervous. Would three be enough? I started mixing. I was sweating. I called my science dad over FaceTime for some help. Harry tells me you're quite the science whiz. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Who's Harry? You mean Barry? I was learning. I was growing. I was evolving until... I did it. The V-Jolt was made with only three glass jars used. Oh, hell yeah! I was so proud. Mr. Osborne, I finally made V-Jolt. Tell me how! It's kind of complicated to explain. But you can't do this to me. You know how much I sacrifice! Okay, Mr. Osborne, talk to you later. I spread my V-Jolt seed across the land, returned to the overworld, and right when I thought the plant was dead, it attacked me. I was sure I was dead. It was freaking over, man. Until... Can't we just settle this over a pint? No. All right, then. <laughs> Barry, he... 
he saved me. Jeez, man, I've been giving you a hard time this whole trip and, you know, you're not such a bad guy. You went out of your way to save my life and I forgive you for giving me those acid rounds. I always knew you were a good guy, Barry. I escaped the residence, chilled out in the mansion some more, and came across some hunters. To be honest, they weren't too bad. I killed a few with my acid rounds since I couldn't carry them with me the whole way, and because the rooms were so small, I could easily outrun them. And guess what, my lads? It was time for the epic snake battle finale. To be honest, it wasn't that epic. All I really did was chase him around the bookcase and stab him in the butt till he died. I'm not proud of my strategy, but it worked, goddammit. I was finishing the mansion's puzzles, and I shit you not, if I had picked up just one more item, let's say the shotgun for example, I would have been screwed. A lot of puzzles required either two or three pieces being combined together, and if I didn't have room to hold anything, that would have been that. By the way, for all of the babies in the audience, oh, oh, he, he's lying, he didn't complete the full run, he cut stuff out of his videos, meh. I uploaded the full proof video for this run on my second channel, Dante Ravioli Proof. I don't do it with every challenge though, so don't get greedy now, you rascally scoundrels. Now guys, listen, listen to me. Give me this 10 seconds, watch this clip, and see how ridiculous it is. The stars are finished. Someone is a traitor. Umbrella set us up. Arrico! Bro, what are you doing? Go chase them! Traitor? Who? Why, why are you so calm about this? Go chase them! She had the complete opposite reaction to what I would have done in that situation. Jesus Christ. Well, what do you know? They got away. Probably because Jill was trying to figure out math calculations while Enrico bled out in front of her. Will you take the shaft? <laughs> oh yeah, Jill will take that shaft alright. <laughs> Look guys, Jill really took the shaft. You dirty minded dog, get out of here! This is a Christian channel. Forget thick boys, my new catchphrase is read your bibles tonight. Enrico gave me yet another permanent crank, so my inventory space was down to just two slots. Hoo <laughs> boys, it's getting tight! Will I be able to do it? Will I be able to finish the challenge? Only God himself knows. A huge boulder blocks the way. Hmm, what would Chris do? I made it to an interesting, fun, spinny puzzle room, and I couldn't help but notice something. Wait, hold on. Do you guys notice what I notice? Well, that's it for me. This game's 10 out of 10 hands down. I finished building the shaft, and that's when I came across my homeboy, Barry, again. Yes! It's always a good time when Barry's around. We made it to the bottom of the creepy mine shaft, and as luck would have it, we heard a really spooky sound. What the hell is that sound? Jill, go check it out. Bullshit! Barry, what drugs are you on? You hear a scary sound in a creepy mine shaft and you send the woman to go check it out? I've never seen a bigger pussy in my life. I'll stay here and secure our escape route in case something happens. Oh really, huh? That's how it is? Okay. I'm not gonna lie, I was absolutely terrified. Look! Even Jill was shaking! This stuff is no joke. <laughs> what are you doing? I always knew you were a piece of shit, Barry! I like how he looked at me the whole way up too. I climbed out of hell, made my last trip back to the mansion, and finally made it to the ominous creepy doors in the back. And guess who I found creeping around the basement? Why do you have your gun behind your back, Barry? Huh! Rule number one of Fight Club, never bring a magnum to a fist fight! What are you, stupid or something? I always knew you were a piece of shit, Barry. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven. No time to talk. Two Jill, hand me my gun! As much as I wanted to blow Barry's brains all over the ceiling, I just couldn't help but remember all the good times we had. Okay, well, I guess that was the only good time we had, but you know what? He saved my life. Sure, he was talking smack about stars behind our backs, he left me for dead in a spooky mine, and he aimed his gun at my head, but who knows? Maybe he wasn't gonna blow my brains out. And that's when it all clicked and made sense to me. Ogres are like onions! What's gotten into you? What's gotten into you? What's gotten into you? 
Barry was an innocent man and his pure soul had been corrupted by Shrek. I trusted him, gave him back his gun, and we defeated Lisa Trevor once and for all. Oh my god! Well, that was anticlimactic. But I deduced that Lisa Trevor was actually Big Smoke. Looks like the mystery solved, gang. I gave Barry a little kiss on the forehead, put the eagle and wolf medallions in the fountain, and made my way to the finale of the game, the laboratory. The Shin Master came back out when I saw this gross looking zombie in the lab, and even though I could have easily destroyed him, my good heart decided to let him live. Being down in the lab, I started to pin the dots together. Wesker was in the lab pictures, he was mentioned in several papers, and it all made sense. He was the real bad guy of the game, not Barry. Barry was a fine young gent. There's not much to say about the lab. I used some incendiary grenades on some random zombros, avoided the little buggy guys in the furnace rooms, and generally just had a great time. In fact, I never had a single inventory issue down here. And you guys will never guess who I found. It was frigging Lenny, the mad lad himself. <laughs> found you, Lenny. <laughs> Wait, I'll be back to get you out. Okay. By the way, dude, everyone says it's damn near impossible to knife zombies in this game without getting hurt or without backing up 20 feet between each swing. I found it incredibly easy to knife a zombie, as long as you had a little bit of wiggle room. It was time to confront Wesker. Barry, I always knew you were a piece of shit! Barry had turned on me, and I was now alone with Wesker in the science lab. He was gonna kill me any moment, so I was forced to think on my feet and say the first thing that came to mind. Harry tells me you're quite the science whiz. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Wesker didn't look impressed, and right before he put a bullet in my head, we both heard something. What are you doing in my swamp? <laughs> Barry! I always knew you were a great guy. This was the ultimate victory royale, and I was about to start breaking it down like a complete mad lad. Our celebration was cut short when we found out Wesker was still alive. Barry went to stop him from unleashing something horrible, and it looked like we were in the clear. We were too late though. Wesker... released the tyrant. The tyrant turned on his master, gave Barry a good old slap, and it was just me versus it. I was a little nervous. I mean, this guy was gigantic. But after taking a stab at it and failing, I took my final form. The Shin Master was brought out for the final time. I died my first attempt at fighting the tyrant knife only, but on my second attempt I was able to successfully shank his shins and ankles until he got knocked out. And like usual, Barry did absolutely nothing to help me! Guys, don't be like my friend here who didn't do anything. Not doing anything is part of the problem. Right when I thought our mission was complete, the lab self-destruct mode went off. Barry and I yeeted ourselves down the dark hallways, I went up the elevator myself, and I sent the emergency fireworks into the air. To my surprise, Barry came back up and everything was laid out perfectly. Except, the tyrant exploded out from the bottom of the lab. Damn it! Luckily, I had prepared for this very moment. I had 19 grenade launcher rounds specifically saved for the tyrant himself. He went for Barry first and, you know, I owed him one. He saved me not once, but twice during this whole challenge and I knew he deserved to live. I pounded the tyrant with grenades, making him drop Barry very gently, waited for the rocket launcher to be dropped, and said, Hasta la vista, baby. Aw, oh, yeah! Hell freaking yes, we did it! The journey was almost over, but I couldn't help but think we were forgetting something. Wait, I'll be back to get you out. Okay. <gasps> Lenny! Lenny! So we flew back, freed Lenny from his chains, and then we left. It was a good day today. I freed Lenny. I completed the challenge, but more importantly, I made some new friends who I knew I could trust. Barry might have played with my emotions multiple times throughout our adventure, but he saved me in the end and that's all that counts. If you guys want to continue Jill's story, be sure to subscribe to my channel because I'll be going crazy with the new Resident Evil 3 game that's coming out. And make sure you click that bell or else you pretty well aren't subscribed to me, just make sure you click that bell. Thanks for watching, check out my many other gaming challenge videos, and don't forget to read your bibles tonight.